Pretty good, not too bad. A um, couple minor diet changes. Um, I'm about 277 this morning. Um, coach is happy. He actually said we can get some sushi after this workout with Evan because he knew what kind of workout it was going to be. I uh, haven't had sushi in about 10 weeks, so I'm pretty excited. Um, rather than that, everything's going smooth. Um, you know, five and a half weeks, so just trying to stay mentally and physically strong. Do you feel that this workout has made you worthy of sushi? Yes. <laughs> yes. 100%. legs I decided that it might be a benefit to both of us you know Vincenzo I'm assuming doesn't typically train the way you know that we decided to train today it was kind of a, a lot of volume um, not a lot of rest between sets it wasn't particularly heavy per se but considering the the speed of the workout and um, the intensity of it it felt pretty damn heavy <laughs> so I figured with him being only you know four or five weeks out from his next contest, a workout like this might help him to you know improve condition and you know burn those extra calories and you know drive up that intensity that always seems to help the body at the, at the end. You know, as for myself, while well, I was on vacation all week last week, <laughs> so I figured it would make a it'd be a good welcome back, a uh, good firm kick in the ass. So we decided that we would start with some leg extensions and uh, leg press. And we, would bu we built up in the weight until we found a weight that was, uh, I guess you could say, most appropriate. And from there, we just we kept the rest in between sets very, very minimal, about a minute, minute and a half tops. Uh, it pretty much turned into he would go, I would go, he would go, I would go. And uh, we did about six sets in total their six supersets. this last once I found out uh, once we made it final you know last night I was thinking about it before bed and just coming here I was a little nervous but uh, after all said and done it was a great workout and um, great experience great memories made uh, and it was just all around very hard tough workout uh, very grueling but we got through it so that's in the past but uh, I appreciate having you know welcoming me at, to his gym and it was a, 
was a great experience. I loved it. Every every uh, grueling second of it. <laughs> <laughs> After that, we moved on to squats, and going into it, the idea was to do 10 sets of 10. This is something I've done over the years. I mean, I started doing this way back in my basement. I remember reading about German volume training, um, and I'm, I'm certainly no um, authority on the subject, and I'm sure I don't do it to the T, but similar concept of doing a, you know, a large number of sets, um, you know, large number of reps, set after set after set, um, with, the, with the rest in between sets being very minimal on a compound movement. And uh, it's, it, it's very difficult, it's hard. And uh, the idea is that you shouldn't actually be able to do 10 sets of 10. That if you, know, you go through all 10 sets and you hit 10 reps on all of them, the weight was too light. Or you were waiting too long in between sets. Or um, you, know, it, you shouldn't really be able to hit that. And uh, it proved. Correct. <laughs> I think around six, uh, set six or so, I began failing, not hitting all 10 reps. Um, a lot of times people will start taking longer rests in between sets so that they can get all 10 of those reps. The idea is to not do that, to keep the intensity high, to get into that set again when you're not ready for it, when you don't feel ready, when you're still out of breath, when your muscle still aches, when the lactic acid is still high. Um, that's where that intensity comes from. And I think that, you know, with him being a few weeks out from a show, that kind of intensity is a good thing. That, that beats your ass, you know, that brings out condition. So after we finished the quads, although you know doing so many sets of between the leg press and the squat, you do hit a lot of hamstring. So after that, we didn't feel uh, compelled to really go do anything crazy for hamstring. So 
it was you know three or four sets of lying hamstring curls and then another three to four sets of uh, glute ham raises and uh, that was pretty much the workout last night i was uh, a little nervous you know because this is my third day on lower carbs which we all know carbs kind of get you through most workouts um but you know i just stayed mentally strong you know my it was like my muscles wanted to give out, my fucking legs wanted to give out before my, my head, so that was good. And we got done, we agreed that, you know, 10 sets of the 315 was a little much, so we stopped at eight, which was more than enough. And we didn't include the two or three warm-ups, so we did hit 10 sets, but it was, uh, it was just an all around great hardcore workout. That's how I like to train. And uh, I, was expe I was, wasn't expecting anything less, so I mentally prepared myself the last few days clear my mind of all things I was thinking about and just put my head to it. Now bend your body, just your body, over and come up. Come all the way up. Swing your body up. You know, I've looked up to him since I was like 19. I think uh, him and Antoine were like the first bodybuilders I've ever started watching on YouTube. And I used to just constantly watch their videos after football practice. And then one day I said, you know what? Football is just not for me. I'm gonna you know, try out this bodybuilding thing. So at 20, I gave it a shot. It was only three years ago. And uh, you know, the progress I've made now, definitely Evan has impacted me. You know, with that, I'm always keeping them, those guys in the back of my head when I'm training through diets because they've lived it and fucking breathe it, still do. Last one. Yeah, I mean, when I look at Vincenzo, I can't help but, um, you know, think back to when I was his age and say, geez, okay, I remember what that felt like or I remember what that was like. You know, uh, Vincenzo's only 23. And shit, I mean, when I think back to when I was 23, and what was going on in my life and the way that I felt physically and um, just really everything. I, I know that for him that this is really a great time, that he's, his body is fresh, he's strong. Uh, bodybuilding is his passion, it's what's on his mind. And um, you know, he's, he's, you know, at 23 I didn't have uh, a sponsorship with, with uh, Animal or anything like that. I was really not even on the map. So he's, uh, he's well on his way. He's a, he's a big guy. I'm sure right now sitting next to him, I look like his kid brother. So. <laughs> I, I think so. <laughs> um, when I look at him, I say, yeah, I remember what that felt like. You know, cause when I was asking him, hey, you know, you get any pains? You know, how's it feel when you squat? No, nothing hurts. Everything feels good. So, yep, I remember what that feels like. <laughs> and that's a great thing. That's a beautiful thing. Probably any words of wisdom that I would give him, somebody gave to me, I just, you know, chose not to listen. <laughs> so I would urge him uh, to listen to me when I tell him, you know, to take your time, number one. Uh, you know, when you're young and you're excited, the tendency is to be in a rush and to want things now and to, um, you know, to be a little bit impatient. I think comparatively, compared to a lot of the guys around me that I came up with, um, I have been more patient than a lot of them. With that being said, you know, sometimes you can get a little bit overzealous. You can lose focus of things that are really most important. And I would urge him to, you know, and I don't think he really needs to be reminded of it, to be totally honest. Um, you know, he's a good kid. He's got a solid head on his shoulders. He comes from a good family. Um, but I would tell him to A, take your time, you know, B, you know, don't forget where you came from, stay true, you know, to your family, your friends, those are the people, there's gonna be a lot of people that enter your life from here moving forward who, you know, see you as someone, you know, that maybe you could do something for them or you know, they see you as a prolific person and they want to, I don't wanna say they wanna take from you, but they're, a lot of times they're interested in what you can do for them or sometimes in a way, how can they feed off of you? Um, and they'll come, you know, big smiles on their face and they'll be, oh, you know, 
this guy's such a nice guy, you know, oh, but he's, he's my friend, he's a good friend. Your good friends are people that have known you, um, you know, along the way, the people that have been there for you, your father, your family. Those are the people that, you know, you, you need to be most concerned with their opinion, not anybody else, you know. People who want to voice their opinions, you know, whether they call themselves fans or, um, you know, industry experts or whatever, you don't need to worry about their opinion. You need to worry about the people closest to you and ultimately about how you feel. Um, that's it. I appreciate that.